Hey everyone, I'm Rudy and this is But Rudy's Time. Well, at least how it's gonna look in a couple of episodes. Today, we are starting with my Western German slash Eiffel inspired build in City Skylands 2. Early on, thanks to Paradox and Colossal Order, we are going to have a wonderful journey making a Western German mid-sized town. More about that later in today's episode. But first off, a big thanks again to Paradox, uh, who actually partnered with me on this video. So it's actually a sponsored video just to bring you the greatness of City Skylands 2. We are going to have an enjoyable time, so sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and um, I'm gonna talk you through this project I've actually spent already some tremendous hours in. This has been my major project in the last couple of weeks of early access. I'm gonna talk you through all the stuff you need to know from maybe someone who's not been that much into the core, core, core people you've seen, but who's actually been already pretty familiar with the first game and also now with the second game. You see already some of uh, my uh, layout in the background going, so uh, let's dive right into what this project is all about. As I already said, this is going to be a uh, city slash town. It's gonna be somewhat in the middle from its size. That is inspired by the typical kind of towns you see in the region I grew up and I'm still living in. So the western part of Germany. And I kind of, you know, since uh, the maps we have in City Skylands 2 are somewhat hilly and not super flat, um, at least these ones I liked, um, we're going to go a bit more in the, uh, it's not mountainish regions, but like more hilly regions. And so in order to make it somewhat believable, I set the whole theme being in more like the Eiffel area of Germany, which is um, not really the highest peak you can get to in Germany, but you know, it has some significant valleys. It's, really good. Um, it used to be very good for uh, skiing as well <laughs> in the past before the climate change but um, that shall not stop us. The city layout though um, is gonna evolve over time quite dramatically. Now this I chose to go with this project even though it's maybe not my bestest of uh, cities at the beginning. It's becoming a lot better throughout the next episodes and also already in today's episode um, because I've learned so much over the time. Now I I think I was pretty good in City Skylands 1 at some point, but City Skylands 2 does a couple of things uh, in a very different way. I shall also add that this is a fully gameplay oriented um, build, so it's not with free money or anything. I have to actually build a running city, and this is why you will see a little bit of a different layout at the beginning. Now, I will dramatically change it later on to become more organic and more really closer to what our region looks like. The reasons for that are pretty simple. I needed to first of all get the stuff running and since this project has been done during the uh, beta and early access phase, um, this meant we had a lot of updates coming our way from Paradox. They have been mega busy to fix a lot of issues. So you'll see maybe also different graphic variants in between. Um, they've been very busy in the last couple of days fixing a lot of things. One of those actually affected the financial um, you know, capabilities of the city at one point and I had to ensure that we keep on going and this is why certain things um, may be different in the beginning, but they will turn out very good in the end. They've done a stellar job in fixing most of the issues that were really boggling me a little. But um, that said, the main layout of the city is featuring um, a rather big street in the middle that continues some of the suburban areas uh, to the left, right and up of here. Uh, it's going to be changing uh, later on because we will only have one central highway access that's going to go through the main town. The main town is going to be um, located on two sides of a river because that means we have um, a lot of interaction with the river. We are also going to have like a tiny harbor and the idea is that it's actually located near a bit of a bigger river in the area. It's not gonna be the Rhine, but you know, I thought maybe also not the R, but kind of something uh, maybe even fictional in this area I wanted to have. We are going to terraform also this map quite significantly in the end. Um, I didn't do that because I haven't purchased enough of the tiles as of now. So we will need to get rid of the um, huge kind of uh, coastal line we have over here. This should not be coastal, but I loved this map too much to not choose that one. Um, you know, we didn't have that many maps uh, available and even though the editor um, is a thing, it's not working as of now in in order to make it as good as it could be. And so I decided to go one of, with one of the in-game maps to avoid problems. Now, with all these organizational stuff out of the way, uh, you can see that we are starting this little area here with um, some very 
proper industrial areas as well connected to the upper area obviously i had to focus on where the wind is we are also dealing with a lot of fires like a lot of um uh, fires coming from the forests now uh, they actually have caused some issues in between I did cut out a lot of footage where I didn't really pay attention to that you know mostly I built on pause and then just to get some money in I left the game running but I didn't focus on uh, <laughs> my wind turbines at some point that were you know located in the north and were burning like a giant kind of uh, burning sticks I don't know it did just it didn't work out okay so I was I was confused why I didn't have you know enough energy and why I was making uh, a lot of of, uh, negative money so well yeah it, it just turned out to be negative however let's focus real quick on this new suburban area I'm building over here because this is going to cause us some issues in the future I may already add this um, this is one of the more uh, central areas in terms of where I wanted to have a lot of people living so I went with with more of the medium-sized density buildings whilst the south area is a lot more focused on the um, you know uh, lower density residential areas where we have some of the workers but also more wealthy people later on living in these towns like if you imagine for example our region here in general we have some big cities you know in northern Westphalia um, which is like Cologne, Düsseldorf but we also have the Ruhrgebiet which um, I'll focus on maybe later with City Skylines too yeah, well, kind of some DLCs might be needed for that but I'm really really into making you know cities like Duisburg for example because this is something that the world needs to know I guess the Ruhrgebiet has a, a very weird beauty to it more about if we will make a project about this but the the focus on this project is to go a bit more like countryside area and this is why we usually have like a bigger town that is also not the most beautiful one. Um, it has changed over time, you know, according to, especially in the 80s and 70s and 90s in Germany where a lot of people came there, like tourism in its in the own country was given, but then later on, like late 90s, um, early 2000s and onwards, um, especially the Western Europe and Western, I should say Western German area, hasn't really seen that much attention, uh, especially in terms of tourism. So the money wasn't going into the communities and hence they haven't been developed so much. So this is why you do see a lot of like the same old city centers, which look pretty mid nineties, to be honest. And they're also not like super beautiful. Um, whilst it's being a little bit more dense and the density actually raised during the, as I said, seventies, eighties, nineties, then at a certain point you stop. So we, we obviously will not have like a huge skyline in this city because that's not what this is all about uh, i have another project for that coming in the next day so if you are now here to just click away and go away for whatever reason you should do that um, and if you want to see some towering skyscrapers and a international airport and all that kind of stuff you definitely should stick to the channel uh, there's something really cool coming rather soon because i've been busy not only doing this one speaking of being busy you can see now after the main layout um, as soon as i've unlocked the highway it was time to build the central spine and oh boy that was quite a work to do um i actually watched the video of uh, two lovers 20 again i actually watch a lot of his videos to be honest uh, in terms of city skylines too it's giving very good inspiration and also um he talked about making the highways later um to really fit them into the areas and i can feel the struggle so i wanted to do this a little bit more early on because this is something else we need to talk about like in our region um in the western part of germany this is where most of the highways of the entire country are located we are a very densely settled area if you will a lot of people are living in northern Australia, and for the moment being let's just call it nrw because that's how we call it in german anyways i could also say nrw this is this is like the german nrw but um <laughs> it's shorter you know i don't want to say northern Australia all the time it's such a long word but the thing is, we are living, we are dependent on the highway, okay? This is our elixir of life. Without the highway, there is nothing, okay? You can't reach anything um, other than just if you take the countryside road, it's going to take you a billion years. That's that's the rule. So um, that's why we have a lot of highways and everything is built around these highways. So Germany has had a good infrastructure in the late 80s, mid 90s, you'll hear that a lot because Germany has been doing very good late 80s, early 90s, mid 90s. That's been the proper time of Germany, but we've been falling back ever since now, especially in infrastructure. And this is also why you see and uh, you will see that through the episodes. I'm going to focus on more 
ex exactly this 80s 90s inspired um, architecture when it comes to highways and such and also sometimes finding solutions that usually modern day infrastructurists wouldn't do necessarily uh, unfortunately we have quite a lot of the, these problems here and this is why everything will be built around this central highway spline, which is causing me already some issues because I'm, uh, you know, intentionally um, having the other connectors disconnected at the moment being, which also um, hindered the inflow of the um, city because obviously everyone is trying to go via this one central spline and that causes some issues outside of the city boundary. Um, so I may actually reactivate the other ones at a later stage of this, you'll see that because otherwise I could make the city grow uh, in the way I wanted to. Um, but it's actually a very fun challenge because at some point where we will grow the city, which is going to be in the next episode, um, there is the main issue that I don't want to focus on the inner city anymore, simply because that's not how it works over here. We have some more countryside, like satellite towns that actually belong to the main city, community-wise and also like government-wise and blah, blah, blah. But they are not like as much to the center core of the city and there will be more countryside stuff and there will be some fields and industries and stuff. So that's going to be the focus of the next episodes. But today's episode is all about fixing the inner city layout, making sure that the central spline highway is the main connector and you can see my struggle is real i do have to say though that the road tool is the strong point of this game for most of the times it has been incredibly reliable for me and you can play a lot like if you get your hands on the game in a couple of days in five to be precise you'll see that you can do a lot already with um you know the snapping activated which you should actually leave on um, on default because that's going to help you to really focus on making things look organic and nice but you can obviously disable the snapping and then you can also play around especially with the um, upgrade tool you can move parts of the layout later on you got to be very careful with that but it's actually doing wonders the only thing that i had a lot of struggle with was the height detection i'm not entirely sure if it's just me being too stupid to put it together or if the height detection Detection is a little bit aggressive so uh, what I mean by that is that the bridges usually have to be properly high um, in terms of which road type some road types are better than others but um, I'm not sure if it's super realistic or if it's just like a security feature to ensure that nothing is gonna clip through there or whatnot but I just figured that most of these things were really uh, you know uh, sometimes hard to get right and once you had the bridges and stuff done it looked properly high to be honest but fine you know i i kind of felt this now i want to talk about one thing in particular and you'll see that now i'm starting to improve this area already over here i'm still not 100 percent happy now we have the landfill relatively close to the inner city core which um i 100 going to change and we've got the industrial area also super close to it which as i said in an early stage of the game was relatively necessary in order to make sure that the city runs and everything is you know close by so i could cruise things but i'm very very much unhappy exactly i tried also to play around with um some of the edges over here where you can see i'm using the road that actually and i like the feature that some of the roads if you put them close to a to a cliff they start creating this wonderful um kind of concrete foundation thing so you have this huge wall which i don't know why at this point in the build i found this look good um later on i totally dislike it so i'm going to change this because it just also looks weird it doesn't belong there and i wanted to make it look more um, organic but for the moment being we had this huge wall there um as like a, a part of the landfill like you Technically, you can see something like that in, in our region. It wouldn't be necessarily like a full wall of concrete, obviously. It would more like be like a stone wall and carved into the mountain. Um, this is also one of the things I really do hope we get in the future. We do have, obviously, the landscaping tool available to us at all times. And that is mega. Um, that is a insane improvement to uh, in comparison to Cities Guidance 1 because there we either needed a mod for that or it was super expensive with the soil and blah 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 so uh, that's not a thing this time around and I find this beautiful like all all about realism is good but at some point it's a game at the end of the day and you want to shape things your way um, maybe they you know they have an option in the future where you can get your soil kind of calculations back if you want them but yeah I don't know if that's really necessary speaking of really necessary <laughs> the entire entrance into our industrial zone and 
yeah, it's it's been difficult. Um, I found a way that it worked at some point, but the more the the city grew, it became more and more of an issue uh, because the the traffic jams are becoming a, a real trouble here. And you'll see some improvements uh, throughout the next episode, especially. Uh, but honestly, even speaking now with you, with the city is already pretty developed. I uh, I still am not relatively happy with this area, how it's looking at the time being. So we'll focus on that maybe in episode four to five or so, just to give you a little bit of a heads up that this is gonna be like a an eyesore for a while now. <laughs> um, mainly because it just works and I needed to focus on other things first. Like, it's so fun to build in this game because you've got so much to do at the same time, but you feel so much more in control. I can't really put this into specific arguments, but I always felt the vanilla version of City Skylines 1, and honestly, I, this is still what I have to compare it to, uh, felt super powerful, but also very destructive in a way, and things were not mega intuitive at some point. This game, however, feels super intuitive at all times, and things are a lot more fledged out. It's really a lot more satisfying to build. You are very much rewarded if things work. Um, still, I gotta argue that the, especially the way things interact with the terrain at some point is still very finicky, even though it's miles better than it was in the first game, but I think this is still one of the areas we could need some mods for uh, speaking of move it or something like that but it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough one I, I gotta say but I always felt in control the game always gave me the info I needed to understand what's wrong and what not so um, I, I gotta say I'm mega happy with how it felt like the, the playing experience in general and also how stable the game was despite being a beta at all time um, has been very positive. I've been very positive surprised. I've played a lot of early access and betas now from various uh, from from various studios and various um, uh, you know publishers, and you know there are always issues. But this game has been on the rather stable side of things, which I think is a good is a good thing. Yes, it's beastie. Yes, it's very resource heavy. It's looking good though. Nighttime and weather looks good. You'll not you're not going to see too much of it in these videos because. Like from it, from building, you know, when you build, that, that the weather and nighttime and stuff just kind of annoys us. Okay, it's not really helping too much, but you'll see later on, obviously, some shots and so on. So uh, yeah, uh, just to finish up, what we started. You can see now the the main part of the city has been off the south side of the river. Um, the north side of the c uh, city will also be more like where the main infrastructure goes, with uh, another highway connection and the central station and some parking and blah blah blah. Maybe even like a tiny airport will be in the region, we'll see about that later on. Um, but then we also have this island in the middle, which I'm definitely gonna keep. This is basically where the old town used to be and now has been reshaped maybe. Uh, I'm not sure how exactly I'm gonna do this because we don't really have too many nice old town assets at the moment. We can find some cool things on the map that we will use, more about that in the future. But yeah, this is where the traffic jam, by the way, is going to uh, happen. And this is uh, stuff for the future, Rudy, because that's where we end today's episode. You've seen the main layout. I'm gonna add some uh, cinematics of the city now, so you can see the overview of uh, where we left off with. And honestly, I really do like uh, how it looks from its core, you know, there are a lot of things to fix, you, you'll see, as I said, uh, especially the industrial area is not really um, make, making me too happy right now, and we've got a lot of issues to fix within these suburb areas, we're going to talk about specifically which district is which in the next episode, but I'm mega happy, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. I had a blast playing this game. Oh boy, has this been fun. Um, you'll see so much great stuff throughout the next episodes and you'll also see so much great stuff on the channel to see the versatility of the game already in this based game version. I, uh, I have been... I've not been that happy with a game in such a long time and that says something uh, because I've had games that made me really happy but that one, that one really makes me super happy. So I'm hoping that you guys are as excited as I am for the next episodes. Make sure to sub to the channel if you haven't already to be notified. Also make sure to check the notification because YouTube at the moment is just weird putting out notifications. So to ensure to see the next episode, click that bell for the moment, get rid of it later, I don't know. But have a good time, thank you so much for the support, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed that one and now it's time for your feedback. Everything you want to say, you want to know about the game, want to know about this project, if you've got ideas, if you're from the region, let me know in the comments down below. I'm super excited to get into touch with you. So uh, yeah, just drop 
anything down below. I'll be there. Have a good time. Thank you so much. And I see you in the next one. Goodbye.